Hi, I'm Claudia. Welcome to Learning Unit 1 on the Introduction to Occupational Safety and Health Management. By the end of Learning Unit 1, students will be able to understand the concept of occupational safety and health, understand the history of occupational safety and health at the workplace, identify the statutory requirements under OSHA 1994, understand the importance of safety in the workplace, and also able to describe the roles of safety and health organizations in Malaysia. Accidents happen from time to time at the workplace. Thus, many people feel that accident is something that cannot be avoided in the workplace. However, there are ways to avoid accidents at the workplace. People who are to be responsible for accidents because it involves people in particular. If everything around people are to be considered as hazard, people are responsible to create, to own, to use, to maintain, to store and to dispose the hazard. The question is, who are these people? They are the government, the employers, the employees and the communities. The history of occupational safety and health starts as early as 2500 BC in Babylon through the court of Hammurabi. This court is carved on a stone monument in black and exhibited in public. This court sets out that prevention is done through retaliation in the forms of fines, and anyone who is found to be negligent and the negligence resulting in death or loss, they will be fined accordingly. For the occupational safety and health management in Malaysia, the role of occupational safety and health has been in existence since 120 years ago in the late 19th century. It started with steam boiler safety and then followed by machinery safety. After that, it was continued with industrial safety, industrial safety hygiene, and lastly, occupational safety and health that covers every work sector. The history, role, and development of this department has gone through five eras namely the steam boiler era, the machinery safety era, the industrial safety era, the industrial safety and hygiene, and the occupational safety and health era, which is the current act used in Malaysia. The purpose of Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994 is to promote and encourage occupational safety and health awareness among workers and to create organization along with effective safety and health measures. This would be carried out by self-regulation schemes that match the industry or related organization. This act, which contains 15 section, is a measure that supersedes any conflict in existing occupational safety and health laws such as the Factory and Machinery Act 1967. The Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994 complements any existing legislative provision and if there are any conflicts, the Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994 will overcome it. This act also defines the responsibilities of employers, manufacturer, employees, self-employed workers, designers, importers, and vendors. Even though those responsibilities are general, it would still need serious attention and would carry all kinds of liabilities. This Act also provides for the appointments of enforcement officers, establishment of National Council for Occupational Safety and Health, formation of policy and arrangement of measures to protect safety, health and welfare of people at work and others who might be endangered by the activities of people at work. The powers to enforce, to inspect and the liabilities for breaking the law are also clearly defined. With the approval of this Act, starting from April 1994, the Department of Factory and Machinery has been renamed as the Department of Occupational Safety and Health, DOSH, and the inspectors are called Occupational Safety and Health Officers. Safety is very important at the workplace. A safe working environment means happy employees, productivity, quality of work, and performance of the organization. Human loss and suffering of any injury is immeasurable. Thus, safety culture should be implemented by the management and employees to prevent accidents and injuries from occurring. 
Without the cooperation from both management and employees, it is almost impossible to implement safety culture and to create awareness on the importance of safety at work. There is few importance of safety at the workplace. Number one, it helps to avoid any serious accidents which will cause injury, disabilities, illnesses or death at the workplace. Next, it prevents people from being harmed at work and increases productivity of the employees and the organization. Apart from that, it can reduce staff turnover because if employees feel safe working with the organization, they will be loyal to the organization. Safety at the workplace also promotes lower staff absenteeism due to sickness which lead to significant cost saving because if there is no accident at the workplace, it will reduce the compensation cost. Furthermore, it promotes a quality lifestyle, better work methods and improves organizational performance. It also helps employees to develop skills, to be aware of the need to develop a safe environment and to comply with safe systems of work. Plus, it increases the motivation to work and enhance employees' commitment or loyalty towards the organization. Occupational safety and health management is vital for every organization. It is because failure to ensure the safety and health at the workplace can lead to accidents. That is why it is important to be aware that accidents can be prevented or at least minimized. Prevention is more profitable than managing the impact of accidents. Prevention may be costly, but to deal with accidents can be costlier and in total not profitable. Industrial accident is very costly because it involves lives, money, and reputation. For example, the Bhopal gas tragedy in Bhopal, India in December 1984 cost 558,125 injuries and a total of 3,787 deaths related to the gas release. Lives were taken and many were injured. Not only the employees suffered, but their families may be affected emotionally as well. And as for the organization, it costs them money to pay for the compensation and their reputation is also at stake. Healthy employees also leads to productivity and quality. Apart from that, the decline in accidents and health problems will certainly reduce sick leave cost and does not interfere with productivity. Next, equipment and optimal working environment is also important as it can lead to the improvement of productivity, quality, and reduce the risk of safety and health. For example, in manufacturing industry, employees are working with machines every single day, especially those in the production section. If the machines are being maintained from time to time, employees will be able to work without worrying about the risk of the machine to their safety and health, and therefore, productivity and quality of work will definitely increase. To prevent accident at the workplace, it is important to cultivate awareness among employees and the management. Thus, programs should be organized to implement awareness of safety and health at work. There are few steps that can be implemented to manage safety and health at work, such as by having the safety and health policy to ensure that everyone in the organization will follow the rules and regulations of the policy. Next is to identify and establish a program management for organization, then assessing risk and implementing risk control, and finally reviewing, evaluating and improving the safety and health policy gradually. Much can be done to implement awareness of OSH at work, but there will always be obstacles in the implementation of the program. Some of the obvious obstacles are lack of support either by the management or the employees, lack of understanding from the management, perception of management such as extra cost for the organization, and poor communication especially when policy is not being communicated effectively from top to bottom and vice versa. But obstacles are just obstacles which can be overcome if it is managed the right way. One of the ways to overcome the obstacles is to enhance awareness of the importance of OSH among the management and employees 
And another way is to ensure everyone in the organization, including the management, to see the importance of making the occupational safety and health program a success. Thus, there are few organizations in Malaysia that are responsible to help manage the safety and health at the workplace, such as the Department of Safety and Health, DOSH, National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, and the Social Security Organization, SOCSO. The role of Department of Safety and Health, DOSH, in Malaysia are to ensure the safety, health, and welfare of people at work from arising hazards in all activities at the workplace, to investigate all accidents, poisonous, or dangerous occurrences in the workplace, to administer and enforce the legislation related to occupational safety and health of the country, to study and review the legislation and OSHA 1994 policies whenever necessary, and to provide advisory service and information to all agencies about the management and technical aspects of occupational safety and health. Next is the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, and their roles include to provide training and consultation services, to disseminate information, and to conduct research in the field of OSH. As for the Social Security Organization, SOCSO, in Malaysia, their roles are to provide social security protection by social insurance, including medical and cash benefits, to give provision of artificial ads and rehabilitation to employees in order to reduce suffering, and to provide financial guarantee and protection to the workers' family. There is a story about four people named Everybody, Somebody, anybody and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about it because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody would not do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. From the reflection on the short story from Peterson 1996, make a short video in duration of maximum three minutes on your own experience of a blaming game in completing a task.